Tash Dile and welcome to Tibet This Week. This is Sakina Bhatt with another edition of Weekly News on Tibet, His Holiness the Dalai Lama and Central Tibetan Administration. Let's look at the headlines first. His Holiness the Dalai Lama condoles demise of former French President Jack Chirag. His Holiness the Dalai Lama addresses a group of Mongolian. Sikyong and Kanu Chokyong Wangchuk honored for their outstanding service. Gandhi and Buddha are India's two greatest exports to the world. Sikyong on Gandhi Jayanti. CTA announced 535 the 550 Youth Ambassadors. CTA says 70th founding anniversary of People's Republic of China marks 60 years of Tibet occupation. Tibetan Parliament in Exile urges US to appoint a special coordinator for Tibetan issue. His Holiness the Dalai Lama wrote a condolence letter to Madame Bernadette Chirag expressing his grief on the demise of her husband, former French President Jack Chirag. In the condolence letter, His Holiness wrote, I had the privilege of knowing Monsieur Chirag ever since he was elected mayor of Paris. I counted him among the friends of the Tibetan people. When he was president of France, I admired the way he cultivated close cooperation with Germany, which served to strengthen the European Union. I have a dream that similar visionary political projects will spread to Africa, Latin America and Asia. His dedication in championing the integration of the European Union will be remembered with respect, said His Holiness. Jack Chirac served as President of France from 1995 to 2007. He died at the age of 86 on Thursday last week. His Holiness the Dalai Lama addressed a group of Mongolian at his residence in Dharamshala on Friday last week. His Holiness the Dalai Lama noted that Tibetans and Mongolians can study the major texts of Buddhism including Paramana Vartika or Commentary on Valid Cognition, Paramita or Perfection and Madhyamaka or Middle Way. Adding this knowledge with science, His Holiness informed that the Nalanda tradition of Buddhism will survive till the 22nd or 23rd century and the Mongolians can contribute to the survival of Buddhism, said His Holiness. Sikyong Dr. Lupsang Singe and Health Kalin Chokyong Wangchuk were honored with Sempo Chakje Gold Medal and Appreciation Award respectively by Dokam Yushu Welfare Society at Kasha Secretariat on Tuesday this week. The Dokam Yushu Society is the first battle organization to present a recognition award for CTA leadership at its headquarters in Dharamshala. They will also present a gratitude award to His Holiness the Dalai Lama. The Central Tibetan Administration observed the 150th birth anniversary of Mahatma Gandhi with a flag hoisting ceremony at the Kasha on Wednesday this week. For us, Gandhi is very special because nonviolence succeeded in India and have succeeded in many places around the world. If nonviolence have worked for them, and it will work for us as well. That's why he's very special. And being in India, being so generous with the Tibetans, so supportive, we just want to observe and salute this great country. To mark the occasion, Central Tibetan Administration and its offices across India, led by the Department of Health, observed the Swachh Bharat Abhiyan mass movement against single-use plastic. This year, the CTS Health Department announced special efforts towards banning single-use plastic in support of the Government of India's initiative to outlaw single-use plastic. Tibetans uh, are fully participating in Swachh Bharat and we have appealed to Tibetans to clean their own communities and neighboring communities. So the staff of CTA are on full force to clean uh, the whole Kanki area and many NGOs are participating in cleaning the Ramsala area as well and many Tibetans are participating in cleaning their settlements and their neighboring areas. So for which we want to say salute to Swaj Bharat. Everybody should participate to preserve their own environment and maintain their good health. On Tuesday this week, the Central Tibetan Administration launched its maiden CTA 535, the 550 Youth Ambassadors, designed to spotlight five young visionaries under the age of 35 from the recently held 550 Youth Forum. The five selected youth ambassadors will soon take on a two-week exposure tour to Tibetan settlements, monasteries and major CTA functionaries across India. 
They will also liaise with the respective offices of Tibet and represent CTA at various speaking forums for Tibetan youth. As the People's Republic of China celebrated its 70th founding anniversary on Monday this week, some dubbed the celebration as a day of grief because of the ongoing unrest in Hong Kong as well as the gross violation of human rights in Tibet and East Turkestan, the PRC's founding anniversary. Severe restrictions of basic human freedoms, arbitrary arrest, incommunicative detentions and torture and unnatural deaths have all become the hallmarks of Chinese rule in Tibet. Mr. Tsuang Gelbo Arya, Secretary of Department of Information of Central Tibetan Administration, who was responding to the reports, said, If these claims were to be taken at face value, it raises many questions and contradictions. This uh, today is a 70th anniversary of the foundation of the uh, People's Republic of China. So China, they are celebrating it and they have said that uh, they have made a lot of progress. At the same time, they have issued uh, two important documents one of which is a document on the human rights, and the other is their standing in the global issues. In both of the documents, what they have said is that uh, they have, uh, in these 70 years, they have promoted, uh, made a great effort, and promoted, uh, uh, made a lot of progress in the human rights, and they have peacefully contributed in the uh, peace process of the global, uh, in the world. So, but, uh, from the Tibetan side, what we feel is that uh, since China occupied Tibet from the uh, 1959s, now today is the 60th uh, years of the Ch uh, Chinese occupation of Tibet. What Tibetans have felt is, uh, what our feeling is that uh, since the Chinese occupations, 1.2 million people, they have lost their life. More than 6,000 monasteries have been destroyed. And even now also, there is a lot of repression going on in, in Tibet. To accelerate the process of resolving the long-standing issue of Tibet, the Tibetan parliament in exile urged the U.S. government to appoint a special coordinator for Tibetan issue during a visit by U.S. congressional staffers to the Ramshala on Tuesday this week. The U.S. congressional staffers along with ICT president Mr. Matthew Mikachi and Kasur Tempa Tsiring visited Tibetan Parliament in exile and met Speaker Pema Jungne and Deputy Speaker Acharya Yeshifinsok. During the meeting, the Speaker and the Deputy Speaker talked about the 7th World Parliamentarians Convention on Tibet held in Riga, Latvia, and the visitation program of the Tibetan Parliaments to various countries to meet parliamentarians, officials, and think tanks to garner support for the cause of Tibet. They further elucidated the current situation inside Tibet and about the self-immolations happening inside Tibet and called for continued support for the cause of Tibet. So much for today. See you next time and have a great weekend.